Well, blessed Tuesday to you as we come with your daily encouragement. And we are in uh, chapter 18 of the book of Revelation. Just as a note, uh, we have an early Lent this year because we have an early Easter on March 31st. So uh, we will be going into the Lenten season. We'll try to continue with these, uh, these, uh, uh, this book throughout. Uh, we might have some compliments and so on. Um, might have some extra services. I know we will at church. We have a 6.30 service coming up tomorrow night, and that will be at East for our Ash Wednesday service, and then we'll be going back and forth for that, um, for those Lenten services. We do not have meals at those, but they'll be at 6.30 um, each Wednesday, so come and join us for that time of uh, extra contemplation about God's Word and where it fits in our life today. But today we talk about the fall of Babylon and on this what is usually called Fat Tuesday, the last day of celebration before Lent. Um, it is a reminder that all the, the uh, things that are um, contrary to God are fallen and specifically Babylon. Now, many people believe that this was a secret name for the Roman Empire. And you might say, well, why doesn't it say Roman Empire if it is that? Because when they were passing out these messages, they had to use and call things by another name in order to distract people. So the more elaborate, in many cases, things were, they were more um, ways that, that, that things could get covered up. And of course, that's the thing we love to debate about this book is because these meanings can go five or six different ways. And so this was one of the ways to get the message out without, how should I say, disturbing people that could destroy the message. So that's why um, the Roman Empire is probably called Babylon. And once again, it could be a future Roman Empire. It could be a past Roman Empire. There's lessons to learn from it, regardless of the age that we're at. And so it is a time to, I don't know if we would say somberly rejoice that the Babylon, Rome, has fallen. And that happened in the 400s. It happened after even some of the leaders had become believers, or at least said that they were believers. And so we've had that tension about um, the Christian church was persecuted by government, and then all of a sudden it was thrust through the Middle Ages to be the government. So there's always been a tension about how much of this world do we manage and how much do we prepare ourselves for eternal life. A message and a tension that continues on to this day. So let's look at uh, Revelation 18. And so he says, After this, which was the fall of Babylon, I saw another angel coming down. So there's one angel interpreting the previous chapter. Now there's another angel having great authority and earth was made bright with his splendor. And he called out with a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. It has become a dwelling place of demons, a haunt of every foul spirit, a haunt of every foul bird, a haunt of every foul and hateful beast. Now, one thing to notice is they happen in triplets, and that's just the, the visual, that's part of the poetry of it. And so, you know, we've had completions of seven, we've had completions of three. So, you know, just think about it as terms of repeating things from a three-sided perspective. There are demon spirits, there are demon birds, and there are the very hateful beast that is the essence of government even before and after the fall of Babylon. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. In other words, they've contributed to it. They were part of it. And if we still see how the Roman Empire is considered one of the more successful empires, of the, especially the Western world, we're reminded that Many of us, because of sin, because of the necessity to have a government structure, have drunk from the fornication. And the fornication means is that Babylon either doesn't want to have any deities or it takes on false deities. And that the latter was the, the condition of Rome, is that they had many gods and goddesses of which Christians were, how should I put it, not uh, cooperating 
because they would say this pesky little thing, well, our God is superior to all of them. Our God is more powerful than any of them. Your gods are fake. This God is the true God. And so that's what you have to look at when you hear about the fall of Babylon. So all the nations have drunk of the wine of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. In other words, imitated Rome in order to be as powerful as she was. And the merchants of the earth have grown rich from power of her luxury. Now let's face it, you know, many of us in our side of the world are are still view capitalism as the way to be. And, and it is a successful thing. I'm not here to denounce it per se. It can be successful for many people. But it's a reminder that if your sole purpose of life is to retain power and keep your pocketbook full of, of um, securities, of financial things, you're, you're committing fornication with Babylon. You're, you're being involved in something that is not right. And, and of course, we've talked about tempering your political views to the ultimate view of God, because political views will fall off, but God will always be there. And if we're rich toward God, it means that no matter how much we value and try to protect and try to uh, trade with our money. <laughs> I had a Christian ask me one time, it was during about 2008, I was just about ready to move up down here to Albert Lee from where I was up north in the northern Minnesota. And he was very insistent that I, as a pastor, would know what biblical things I needed to invest in for his portfolio. And I told him, I said, there is no such thing as a, a Christian investment. There are wise investments and there are not wise investments. You can't just label one as Christian and another one as not. And so I, I've told people, it's like, when you read this in the book of Revelation, it's a reminder that these are the things you ultimately don't trust in. You might need to trust in the market and for your insurance, yes, but you still have a greater insurance plan that you need to trust in ultimately. And that, uh, and the sad thing is, is you can't take your money with you. You can't take your family with you or your friends for that matter, but you can take your God into eternity, even as governments, maybe we've been benefited by the government. Maybe we've been disloyal to the government. All those things don't matter when we come up to eternity. And so remember that when you read these things. Now, as far as does it tell you how to vote? Yeah, you can make some wise decisions based on some principles or investment and things like that. But remember, all of these things, if they're politics or economy or even our family, which is probably even the, a greater and more fundamental unit of government, I mean, family comes before government and comes before any of these other things. But the Lord says, put me above all things, because ultimately all of those things will fall. So read that with a grain of salt as we continue to struggle through these chapters. God bless you today. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement. Take care. God bless. We'll see you next time.